the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings of peace and joy, dear sisters and brothers. A retreat preacher, as he began the retreat, asked a simple question. What is the most favorite virtue that Jesus likes in us? What would be Jesus' most favorite virtue? Is that faith? Surely faith ranks on the top. Is that hope? Again, another virtue that ranks on the high. Is that charity? Think of all the occasions where Jesus spoke about love and charity. Is that patience? Is that kindness? The answer of the retreat preacher was the virtue that Jesus values most in us is the virtue of humility. The virtue of humility. Remember God's word in Philippians chapter 2 verse 6. Though he was in the form of God, he humbled himself and became one among us. In fact, the very first sin was sin of pride. Jesus came to defeat the sin of pride and he made himself small. He humbled himself and so too he loves everyone who, lo who humbles himself, who makes himself small. When we visit the Holy Land, when we go to the church of the nativity where Jesus was born. If you want to enter there, if you want to go to the place where Christ is born, you have to actually, the door of the church is very low. You have to bend down and enter. Then if you have to touch the place, you have to literally crawl on our feet to touch the place where Christ was born. It has a symbolic meaning. If you want to have a genuine, sincere God experience, we need to humble ourselves. We need to humble ourselves. In the words of Saint Teresa of Child Jesus, who is called as Little Flower, she says, The beginning of all holiness is humbly admitting that without God we can do nothing, but with in and through Him, everything is possible. St. Paul said that, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He realized the strength comes from Him, not from oneself. When we turn the pages of the Gospel again, some of the most beautiful moments are moments where Jesus met with the humble people. Whenever Jesus met with a humble person, His mercy, His love was overflowing to give a new life and a new beginning. Think of the centurion who said, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Think of the Canaanite woman who said, Lord, the crumbs that fall from the master's table is enough. Think of that woman who had the bleeding for 12 years. She said, if only I touch the fringe of his garment, I will be healed. Think of the good thief who said, Lord, remember me when you are in kingdom. There, every such prayer said by a humble prayer directly touched the sacred heart of Jesus, which he himself described as a humble and humble and gentle heart, meaning any humble prayer, any humble submission to God is acceptable and their blessing flows. Why is the virtue of humility so important to Jesus, so 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 precious to Jesus? Saint Augustine has an answer. He says it was pride that caused the fall. If you ask me, what are the ways to God? I would tell you, the first is humility, 
The second is humility. The third is humility. Jesus invites all of us to have a deeper God experience, to receive blessings in our life by having this virtue of humility. Let's now come to the gospel. There is a very awkward moment in the gospel today. Jesus on the way speaks to the disciples about his passion, death and sufferings. But then they were arguing among themselves who is the greatest? Who is the greatest among the twelve? In order to teach them a lesson about humility, Jesus brings in a small child and he teaches them and he teaches us the, the, the way to be the first is to be the last. And the way to be the last is to be the servant of all. An unspoiled child is the example of humility and submission. Think about our own childhood. We were always dependent, dependent on our parents. The first beatitude Jesus taught is again the same. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Poverty is dependence. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. When there is this humility in us, we will experience blessings and God's presence in our life. St. James in the first reading today has a question. James chapter 4 verse 1. He asks us this question, What causes wars and what causes fightings among us? Is it not your passion that are at war in your members? What causes fight actually when we examine it is our own pride, our own selfishness, our own ego. This causes passion, this causes fight among us. So St. James again says there, James chapter 3 verse 16, For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. Where there is selfish ambition exists, where there is pride exists, there will be there will be every vile practice and disorder. So let us today earnestly desire and pray once again for the virtue of humility. I have three small helps for humility in order to grow in humility. Three small helps. First, humble prayer. Do you want to grow in humility? Build up sincere, genuine prayer life. Bishop Fulton J. Sheen says this, only the humble can pray for prayer presumes we need someone and something. Only the humble can sincerely pray. Remember that beautiful parable Jesus said, the Pharisee and the tax collector. Pharisee was boasting when he came into the chapel. But the tax collector, beating his breast, said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. His prayer was acceptable to God. His prayer reached the heart of God. Why? Not because he was a sinner, but because he made himself small. When we make ourselves small, that prayer reaches God. There is an old saying that in life there are two most important lessons that we should remember. First, there is God. Second, I am not He. I am not God. I need always the grace of God. I need always the strength of God. St. Paul said that in 1 Corinthians 15.10. I am what I am by the grace of God. Let us depend on God in prayer. Sometimes when we have Eucharistic adoration in our chapel during the retreats, I've seen 
people falling prostrate people bowing down prostrating before god and worshiping in fact a beautiful posture in prayer i am nothing i am nothing but dust that acknowledgement is so important in our lives second help in growing in the virtue of humility is regular examination of our conscience spend time regularly to look into your own life when we examine our life in the light of god's word we realize there are so many areas where we need the strength of god where we have failed where we have hurt god regular examination of conscience will always keep us on the right track of humility third regular confession when we examine our conscience and see dust particles in our lives we need a place to go and wash it that is the confession confessional we read in hebrews 4:16 let us then with confidence approach the throne of grace so that we may receive grace and mercy confessional is a place where we receive forgiveness and grace dear brothers and sisters ones a spiritual guide talking to the brothers who were in formation to become priests said brothers if you make an honest sincere genuine confession at least once a month you will be a good priest if you make a genuine sincere honest confession once a month you will be a genuine priest so to every one of us if we have this habit of regular confession we will always grow in grace and humility and god blesses everyone who has the heart he had the humble humble heart i wish to conclude this reflection with a litany of humility which i had found in a book try to pray along with me as we pray this litany of humility your response shall be deliver me jesus from the desire of being esteemed deliver me jesus from the desire of being loved deliver me jesus from the desire of being extolled deliver me jesus from the desire of being honored deliver me jesus from the desire of being praised deliver me jesus from the desire of being preferred to others deliver me jesus from the desire of being consulted deliver me jesus from the desire of being approved deliver me jesus from the fear of being humiliated deliver me jesus from the fear of being despised deliver me jesus from the fear of suffering rebukes deliver me jesus from the fear of being forgotten deliver me jesus from the fear of being ridiculed deliver me jesus from the fear of being wronged deliver me jesus from the fear of being suspected deliver me jesus now response shall be Jesus grant me the grace to desire it that others may be loved more than I Jesus grant me the grace to desire it that others may be esteemed more than I Jesus grant me the grace to desire it that in my opinion of the world others may increase that I may decrease Jesus grant me the grace to desire it that others may be chosen that i set aside jesus grant me the grace to desire it that others may be praised and that i be unnoticed jesus grant me the grace to desire it that others may be preferred to me in everything jesus grant me the grace to desire it that others may become holier than i provided that i become as holy as i should jesus grant me the grace to desire it 
Our Lady of Humility, pray for us. God bless you, dear brothers and sisters.